Welcome to our Floor IQ demonstration. To get started, go to www.flooriq.com. From there, you can join using annual, quarterly, or monthly subscriptions for as little as $395. This can be done through our online credit card payment system or by contacting Floor IQ customer service. Once registered, you can sign in using your username and password. Signing in takes you to the dashboard where you can manage your account and input files. Projects can be organized into different folders and files. Files and folders can easily be created by clicking on the New File or New Folder button. For demonstration purposes, we have already created an input file, which I will click on to go to the Floor IQ Analysis module. The Analysis module is comprised of six input tabs. General, Material Properties, Primary and Secondary Stresses, which describe the loads used to define unstable fracture, Fatigue Loading, which describe the loads used to determine fatigue crack growth, Results, and Report. On the General tab, you can input some basic project information and choose which code you wish to work with, either BS7910 or API579. Depending on which code you select, Floor IQ updates so that you can only work with relevant code inputs. I've selected BS7910. Next, you can select which assessment type you would like to carry out. Failure Assessment Diagram, or FAD, KR Solution, Fracture, Fatigue Crack Growth, or Allowable Initial Floor Sizes, which is a fully automated combination of the first four assessment types. I will select Allowable Initial Floor Sizes. Next, you can choose which solution type you wish to carry out. Choose from Flat Plate, Cylinder Axial Floor, or Cylinder Circumferential Floor. If I select Cylinder, the diagram updates as well as the inputs. For the demonstration, I will use Flat Plate. Next, select the floor type from surface, embedded, or through thickness. I will select surface. Input the geometry in the geometry section, and then move on to the materials property tab. On the material properties tab, you input all of the pertinent information, yield and tensile strength, choose which type of failure assessment diagram you would like, which can be generic or material specific, and toughness properties. For the demonstration, I have chosen crack tip opening displacement, CTOD, and entered a value of 0 0.254. The third tab is where you define the loading for conducting the fracture analysis. The fracture loads are typically the maximum load the structure might see during its life. For example, the 100-year design load or stress. In this section, you also specify the secondary stresses, which we have set to zero for this example, and any stress concentration factors. If you have a weld, you can enter the details here. For this example, I will use parent metal. If you are conducting a floor growth analysis, then the Fatigue Loading tab is where you specify the fatigue loads on the section and its fatigue performance. The fatigue performance is defined using Paris curves, which define the rate of floor growth versus stress intensity. These are derived from testing, or you can use the reference curves from BS7910. In this demonstration, we will use a user-defined curve from testing. The data is input below, and a visual representation can be seen by hitting the plot button. Next, specify the fatigue loading using a stress histogram. These are input as number of cycles per year with associated stress ranges. These can be pasted directly from Excel, with the number of rows expanding automatically to fit the data set. Next, 
define the target life of the structure. A unique feature of Floor IQ, not available in any other programs, is the ability to grow the floor in stages. For example, the floor growth could be non-sour in the first 10 years of service, and then transition to 10 years of sour service after that. In this demonstration, we will use a single stage with a duration of 15 years. Once the first four tabs are completed, you are ready to run Floor IQ. Hit the Run button. For this case, the program iterates to find the floor sizes that grow to unstable fracture failure in the target life. It automatically does this for a range of floor aspect ratios. The first section gives the allowable initial floor size results. These are the floors that will grow to unstable fracture at the end of the fatigue target life. Click on Plot to see a visual representation of the allowable initial floor sizes. Also included is the failure assessment diagram that is used and the unstable fracture results. Finally, you can export the results of your Floor IQ simulation in report format. Choose from either a Word document or PDF document, and then click Export. The report documents all inputs and outputs and can be inserted into the appendix of your report. And that concludes our Floor IQ demonstration. We hope you found this informative and the Floor IQ team look forward to supporting you.